Good afternoon, my name is Liam Randall, and today we're going to cover file extraction using HTTP, FTP, SMTP, and IRC in Bro and Bro IDS. A quick intro. I'm Liam Randall, a Cincinnati-based global network security consultant. You may know me from security conferences, my volunteer work on Bro and Security Union, or perhaps even from IRC. I can usually be found lurking on Freenode, happy to help out my fellow users as Hectman. If you're interested in today's content, please see the following resources for more information. On GitHub, you can find a clone of the, of the Bro repository, my code, and copies of this and other presentations. For relevant content, give us a follow on Twitter or visit us on the web. Even before I get started, I want to point out that a lot of work has gone into the online documentation of BroIDS.org. Most of today's content and explanation can be found directly in the Bro Quick Start Guide listed here. Not everyone learns as well from manuals, so this video is part of a series of videos to assist users in understanding and using BroIDS in their environments. The TLDR today is simply this. To enable file extraction, you can simply overload or redefine these configuration variables in your local.bro. While that's helpful to know, I think it's more important that you understand a key element in how to tune your own Bro installation. It really will assist you to unlock some of the powerful features within Bro. To get started today, we're going to do a quick overview of some of the Bro features, then we're going to do a how-to, and then we'll actually do some demonstrations. So let's start by looking at our company. Our company has its first Bro sensor installed at the border. The Bro sensor is sitting on a tap or a span port and gets a copy of all the traffic into and out of the network. Across this link, we see many plain text protocols, HTTP, SMTP, FTP, and IRC, for example, are commonly used for file transfers. These could be PDFs, applications, Excel documents, really it's any mind type. Now, savvy security administrators may choose, or due to contractual, legal, or regulatory constraints, may be required to document the transfer of specific file types in their environment. While there are many reasons to document or even capture certain file types, here are some of my favorites. Do you have a repository in your network of every executable? I'm sure all of your users and administrators notify the security team when they introduce new software, right? In later videos, we'll explore this further. However, extraction of the files is really just the first step. Should we analyze them, execute them, alert on types of files? If I see someone downloading CWS Shredder, isn't it really just a cry for help? If I see a Windows box pulling files directly from Microsoft, doesn't that tell me that this box is outside of our ADWSUS system center or other patch management solution? To me, the topic we are beginning in today's video is really just a piece of the larger puzzle. However, it's useful in its own right, so let's proceed. There's a lot here that we're not going to look at today. However, I feel a little explanation in this case will go a long way. Today we're going to start out of the file system, and we're specifically interested in the Bro Home Share Bro directory. With one exception, you will never write to any of these directories. The simple exception is the Bro Site directory. It's the main entry point for the configuration of a standalone Bro instance managed by Bro Control. In this directory, you will find a file called local.bro. This is the place where you can add, update, and change your local configuration without fear of your modifications being clobbered by an upgrade. The next two directories we're concerned with are the base and the policy directory. I take these two directories at the same time as they have similar directory structures and contents. By default, Bro automatically loads all scripts under base. These scripts are the infrastructure scripts. They start collecting basic and useful state information about network activities. They also provide the frameworks and utilities you use to build Bro IDS out of. Think of base as sort of our standard library in Bro. The scripts under the policy directory, however, need operator intervention. Depending on the script, it may perform some functions that not every user would want, or the scripts may come with a performance impact. So users must explicitly choose if they want to load them. Each individual script and framework is extensively documented. We will be playing with the policy directory in future videos. In the frameworks directory are those cluster safe libraries that provide high level data structures. Things like the metrics frameworks, you can count the things. The notice framework, which is the cluster safe way to write log files. Both of these frameworks do a lot more than that, however I just want you to understand the shape of the thing. Now to the topic of today's video, customizing the default configuration for the protocols. 
As an example, let's zoom in on the HTTP directory. Understanding one will unlock them all. As you've probably guessed by now, Bro assumes that it will be working with .bro files. A neat feature used to load frameworks in groups of files in Bro is the underscore underscore load file. If we take a quick peek, it simply doesn't include of the .bro files that make up this module. So without exploring the rest of these scripts now, let's jump right into the file extract.bro. Up near the top, you'll see this little export function. Many customizations in Bro just require you to redefine a variable from a standard Bro script with your own value using Bro's redef operator. Now, that may seem a little confusing. A standard Bro script advertises tweakable options to users by defining variables with the ampersand redef attribute and the constant qualifier. A redefinable constant may seem a little goofy, but what it means is that the value may not change at runtime, but remember we are in script land here, so the initial value can change at parse time when Bro loads. So I think by now you've probably figured out what we need to do. Simply redefine the HTTP extract file types variable to include the MIME types that we want to extract. This can simply be done in your local.bro file under the Bro site directory. Please note, however, that there are multiple ways to redefine these variables. You can either use the addition operator plus equals to append onto the array, or you can use the equals operator to simply overwrite the array. Let's do some examples. Okay, so let's get started. Let's take a quick peek at our opt bro share bro base, which is kind of like the standard library, protocols, HTTP, file extract dot bro. Okay, if we look at the file, we've got our default configuration here. Our extract file types is set to the default of no default. Our extraction prefix is set to HTTP dash item. This can be overloaded later with an equals if you'd like, but what this will do is have Bro IDS save each file out and prefix it with the HTTP item prefix. So let's go ahead and run a test. From the command line, I can tell Bro to replay a PCAP file by using the dash R syntax. So I have a HTTP download here in a PCAP. Let's go ahead and play it through Bro and see what happens. Okay, we see that Bro creates our protocol logs, our connection log, which has our TCP connections, the HTTP log, a notice log, a policy, and a packet filter. Let's start at the lower end of the stack and let's look at the con log. We can see here that there are actually three different HTTP connections between these originators and these responders. Let's go ahead and look at some of the details. I know this is a little messy, but we can see here that, they, that the three connections listed in our con.log line up directly with the UIDs listed here in our HTTP log. We can see here that the three connections listed in our con.log line up directly with the three lines listed in our HTTP log. We could actually search up and down the stack using these unique IDs which are consistent throughout the protocol stack logs. Here we can see that there were three downloads. First of type text HTML, then of type application slash x dash dosx, a download of notepad.exe, and then another download of text slash HTML. So let's tell Bro to save all of the application files out directly to disk. Now we could edit our local.bro file as I specified in the previous section, but I'd like to show you another technique now. From the command line when we're testing bro, it is often easiest times to do a little development and then tell bro at load time to load an additional file. So here what I've done is I've done a redefine of the HTTP extract file type variable, and I'm telling Bro to download all application MIME types. Let's go ahead and rerun Bro with that PCAP, and also tell it 
to include this new extract dash files dot row. To do so, we'll type row dash c dash r, include our pcap file that we'd like to read, and then simply specify the additional dot row file we'd like to load. This time, when we look at bro, we see that it has saved the HTTP-item file out to disk right here. So if we take a look at our detailed HTTP logs, we now see that there is a new extraction file type appended onto the end of our log. We can see the file extracted right here. Let's go ahead and check to make sure it's the same file. And as you can see, the MD5s match. I hope today's video has been useful. More importantly, I hope that today you have learned how to configure and tune all of the configuration settings exposed in Bro's default configuration. For a list of other settings you can tune in Bro, please see the great list just posted by my friend Mateus on GitHub. In this list, you'll find all sorts of great settings you can tune from Bro's default configuration. Thank you very much. This has been Liam Randall with BroIDS.org.